Da, 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 da. Okay, the webinar is starting now. Pay attention. <laughs> I hope you're ready with a tea or coffee or maybe a cake. That would be nice. I haven't got anything with me today. I got, I got some water. I'll be fine. All right. Anyway, before we start today, as you know, we're talking about teaching business English. Um, so what I want you to do, I want you to just think if you teach business English or you taught business English in the past, I want you to think about a business English class compared to a general English class. Okay, think about those two different groups of people, groups of students. What do business English learners need and want that is different, you know, than a general English class? What is their focus when they come to the class? Could you add to the chat box any uh, key words or phrases that you think describe what a business English student wants or needs from the class? Oh, domain specific vocabulary already. Thank you, Oksana. Exactly. Specialist words, specialist lexis, professional skills, not just English, right? Yeah, they want a background in English, but they want it within the business sphere. Yeah. Anything else? I see a lot of people typing, so I don't want to. I want to give everyone a chance. Go on, one more. Something different. Okay, lots of skills. Yeah, functional language, different levels, speaking and understanding. Yeah, we got the idea. We've got this kind of key vocabulary, speaking, functions. I agree completely. All right. So what, what, I, what I find anyway is with my business English students is that they, they want to be able to use the language quite quickly. They want to take it from the classroom and use it somewhere. They're probably less interested in learning all of the steps or, and all of the intricacies of grammar because, you know, they're not, they're not so interested in passing this grammar test as they are as using the language in their day-to-day -day life, for example, if it's a, a working business person. All right now, what I thought about, I tried to uh, take all my ideas about what business students want and like and put it into three areas. Now, I thought that maybe they want a course that is flexible is probably number one. The reason for that is that they often, well, first of all, they're kind of doing different things each week and they might want some help with some different skills each week. Maybe they don't want to follow a set course. Maybe they have a meeting next week and they need more negotiation skills. They might come to the teacher and say, can you help me? I have a meeting. They might come to the teacher and say, I have to write this very formal email to the company. Can you help me write it well in good register? Yeah, things like that. So that has to be flexible. Also, they're pretty busy people, right? So the problem is that sometimes they will miss classes. This, uh, this is so common. If you're working with uh, business people and they're, you know, sometimes they're coming before their work, the, during their lunch break or after work, and they're going to miss classes or be late. So the course has to be quite flexible to accommodate that. Number two, uh, practical. As I said already, they need to take the language and they want to actually use it out there in the real world. This is positive, though, you know, if you think about a general English class, if you teach, I don't know, let's say third conditional to your general English class and you spend a lesson on it, the chances are that they won't leave the class and spend the week using third conditional with everyone they speak, even if they talk to someone who speaks English or a native speaker. It would be weird, right? But if you use some kind of functional language with your business students, it's possible that they will be able to go and use it and practice it in the real world if that's the environment they're working in. And that's what they want from the course. They want practical experience and practical uh, tasks that they can put their language skills to good use in. The final one was the course has to be realistic. So it has to be connected to their real world and their real world is business. So they need something that looks like uh, situations they've experienced or situations they expect to experience in the future. All right. So I summed it up that I think these are three key areas that, um, that uh, students really need, business English students really need from a course. Now, what I hope to do today is to show you, uh, take you on a little tour of this new title from Pearson, our business partner, um, and show you that this actually satisfies these three different areas. So what I called this, this webinar today is a successful partnership, you see, business partner, uh, between language and business skills. Because 
as you see, I think what Business Partner does is take uh, lots of language skills and connect it in, in the background of real business skills too. So when the students are working through these, these books, the, uh, these different levels, they're going to be looking at a kind of business scenarios, but also picking up a lot of language as they move along, preparing them for their real jobs out there in the real business world where they're speaking English. Okay. First of all, I just want to give you a little introduction, a little overview to Business Partner, and then we're going to dive into one of the units. Uh, now, first, just some information on the levels. Now, Business Partner follows those traditional levels um, from A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, okay, up to, up to advanced level, which is what we usually get from, from most textbooks, but there's more. Yeah, we also have these extra levels. So we've got A2+, B1+, and B2+. So A2+, obviously, become, comes after A2 before B1. Now, what these extra levels do is just give us kind of higher resolution, if you like, high definition on where we can place our students. Um, so I do a lot of level testing at the moment for London School of English. And when I sometimes I'll meet a student and I'll think, okay, this person is all right, they're, they're kind of strong B1, but they're not quite ready for B2. If I put them at the beginning of a B1 class, they're going to feel that's too easy. But if I put them at the beginning of B2, it's going to be too hard, right? Well, there you go. You can slot them in with, with, a, uh, with a B1 plus. A B1 plus class would be the perfect level for them. So it gives us higher resolution. It gives us more levels to work with. And it's a, it's a great addition. This is happening more and more with various textbooks coming from Pearson. So watch out for that. All right. Now, who is Business Partner for? Well, it's quite uh, flexible here too. Uh, obviously, first of all, it can work with students who are in work, who are already in business. Um, but in addition to that, as we are talking about higher education, it also works for pre-work students. So students maybe at university, or as I said, maybe even older um, school students, you know, in their final years of school. Um, basically, the scenarios, as you'll see, could be uh, worked through by both types of students. It's just the students will take it to a slightly different level depending on their experience, and the teacher can adapt to that, all right? So it's actually useful for both different groups. So... <clears throat> Let's look at what things look like inside the book briefly. So this is a typical unit. And what we have, we have eight units um, per level. So a book would have eight units. And each unit has five sections. Basically, each of these sections, as you can see on the screen, is a lesson. So five particular lessons on different topics. Also, we, at the end there, it's kind of, I put like plus because it's a little bit different, the final session. Um, and this is a business workshop, so it's a, a different style to the other sessions. And that, so basically, you have six lessons there, really. But the business workshop, I don't know, it could be optional. It's up to you guys when, when you look at the book. All right, now, we're going to get into uh, a, a typical unit now. And we're looking at the B1 plus level book, and we're going to be looking at unit six. Basically, I'm going to take you through all of the, uh, the, level, the lessons so you can see an example. And, you know, it's a little tour. You can decide, does this book look useful for me? Could I use it with my classes? Let's see. All right. The best page to start, I usually find, is the first. So we're going to look at, this is the first page of Unit 6, which basically gives you an outline and a summary of what is contained. Uh, notice, first of all, there is a, a topic or a theme running through the unit. And the theme for this unit is entrepreneurs, all right? Now, it gives you, the first thing you'll notice is it gives you the lesson outcomes and how those outcomes are achieved. Let's zoom in a little bit. So on the left there, in the darker gray, we can see what the student should be able to do at the end of the lesson. For example, learners can use vocabulary related to, st to starting and financing a business. So the outcomes are generally connected to some kind of business task. But then if we look on the right, in the lighter gray colors, you can see what the kind of things they do to achieve that outcome. So we've got vocabulary, grammar, we've got speaking and writing, we've got various different things there, how the outcome is achieved, all right? So very clearly set out for each lesson. 
Now let's dive in um, and look inside the book, sorry, inside the unit. Um, so this is lesson one. Uh, the first thing, this is the introduction lesson. Um, and the first thing to notice, bing, there you go. Each uh, of the first lessons in, in the, uh, each unit start with a video. So the new topic is introduced through a video. And notice also it's a BBC video. These videos are authentic. And by that, I mean this, you, what you, who we're going to meet in the video is not an actor. It's a genuine documentary from the BBC. And obviously, in this case, remember the topic, we were talking about entrepreneurs. We're going to meet an entrepreneur. And the entrepreneur we're going to meet is this guy, and he runs a company called Fairphone. Now, the idea of these videos is, you know, they're real. They expose students to a good quality of language. But also, you know, it's engaging. The topic's just interesting. I enjoy watching these videos just for the sake of the videos because I usually find something new out about the world. So what I'm going to show you is a little part of this video just so you can see the idea of the style and the quality. Uh, I'm not going to show you all of it because it, it's about four minutes long or almost just over four minutes, which seems quite long for the webinar. We don't have so much time. But um, uh, I'll give you a little sample of it if you like, okay? So, so we're going to go to this video uh, and meet this guy from Fairphone, uh, an entrepreneur working with mobile phones. Give me one moment. And there we go. We're here. All right. Okay, guys. So, enjoy. really, really, you know, core element of our everyday life. But on the other hand, we don't know anything about it. We didn't start as a company, we started as a campaign. And the campaign question was, how can we give visibility to uh, the situation in Eastern Congo? died in, in, in wars related to the mining of these minerals we use in, in our uh, mobile devices. So what we said is, and you know, with my background as a designer, I said, you know what, why don't we make a device, make a phone? We've been announced the, the fastest growing start tech startup of Europe by the next web, which says something about the, the speed in which we grew. We grew from two people to over 40 people in two, and a, two years. Uh okay, sorry, I have to stop it there because obviously, as I said, it's about over four minutes. So I'm sure if you win a book, you can take a look at it. <laughs> All right. So a um, little sample there of the type of video that would start each unit. Now, things to notice about it, yeah, Fairphone is a real company. I hadn't heard of Fairphone until I looked inside a business partner. And since then, I've been on their website. It's quite interesting, actually. Take a look at the website. It's amazing what they do with uh, recycling phones and, you know, making it more of a sustainable product. So I was quite interested in this. I might buy one. <laughs> anyway, uh, something else to notice about the video is that guy, the entrepreneur guy, he's not a native speaker. I think he's Dutch, okay? Obviously, his English is fantastic. But something that we'll see in many of the videos is we're not exposing students constantly to native speakers from the USA or from the UK or from Australia. They meet people from all over the world with different accents, or with good English, but with different accents. I think that's really important in today's environment, particularly in the business world. Because the truth is that most of our students, the majority of people they use English with in the future will be non-native speakers. So it's kind of a little bit unnatural to always show them native speakers continuously. So I think it's nice that we have a range of accents here. Good English, obviously, but also different accents, global English, if you like. All right. And I say that as obviously 
a British guy. <laughs> All right. So anyway, what happens next with that video? Well, obviously, it gets students thinking about the topic, but also it's, it's kind of a vehicle to bring uh, language to them because the first uh, the first lesson is all about uh, vocabulary and it brings key vocabulary from from the video itself is brought out and isolated by the students as you can see they have a task to do here where they're filling the gaps using words from the video so it's a video it's also a listening task too okay so that's how it's introduced but the lesson isn't over yet of course the students have to do something else with the language and if we go to the next page we can see they have a basically a little project. And this is a communicative task where they're working with a partner um, and they're setting up a business. So they're kind of using what they've learned. They're using some of the inspiration, some of the ideas, but they're, then they're talking about setting up their own business. OK, so that is unit one, a great way to kick off uh, this, this uh, section. Also, something else to tell you is we had that video there, um, but maybe you watch the video and think, oh, it's not so relevant to my students, or maybe they'd like something else. Uh, in many of the units, there's an alternative video as well on the same topic. So you have a choice. You could actually choose which video to use, or you could save one video and use it at a different time and a different class. It's up to you. So in some cases, you do have a choice of different videos to use as that lead in to the section. All right, let's move on to uh, lesson two now. And in lesson two, again, we have authentic content. This time, not in the form of videos, but in the form of, look, it's a newspaper article. This is from the Financial Times, a genuine original article from the Financial Times. Obviously, it's a true story. Um, it's engaging generally to business English students, but it's also used to deliver some grammar. Because what the focus here is, is reported speech. And the grammar is presented in an authentic context from this Financial Times article. And it leads into different exercises the students can do with it. So they're engaged by the article and the topic, but then it leads them to doing a little bit of grammar work based on it too. So now on to lesson three. Now this is one of my, one of my favorites, or is my favorite part of Business Partner. Because in each, uh, each unit, we have these communication skills lessons. And the communication skills really start the students focusing on business skills and business scenarios, right? Uh, notice, just on the business skills, it says influencing. So this is one of the business skills that the students are looking at with a little flavor of English in there too. Now, how do they do that? Well, again, we're coming back to video, like in unit one. In fact, what we're going to see in this unit is four videos in total. We're going to see four videos. Um, and in these videos, we see a realistic business scenario. So we're seeing something, re uh, bringing the reality to the students. Um, it's not an authentic video. It's, they're not real business people. They are actors, but it's kind of a dramatization of a realistic business scenario. There are several videos in the series, and in video number one, what we see is the kind of background. We meet the characters, we meet we, the situation, and we find out what's about to happen. So this is kind of the introductory video to the series, okay? Looking at this topic of influencing. All right, so uh, this is another sample video. We're gonna watch the introduction video to this scenario. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Here we go for video number two. I think I'm quite good at influencing people. I'm usually able to make a strong argument backed with good reasoning. We have some potential buyers from a Mexican chain of business schools coming to London this week. When will they be here? About 20 minutes. They want to look at partnering with online training and education providers from the UK, and I'll be pitching. I expect to get what I want. <laughs> I haven't failed yet. Remember not to be too pushy. Go easy on them. Stop worrying. I thought of everything, really. Remember, we've designed this just for them. I know, I know, but... 
Pedro likes to be involved in decision making. He's quite a collaborative guy and likes to give input. I'm sure it'll be fine. Exactly. Hi, Pedro. Great to see you, Susan. Hello. Hi. Do you want to just come straight through here? Okay. It's perfect. Thanks, Charlotte. Okay, so that was the introduction. Okay, to the to the uh, scenario. As you can see, what's going on there is Paula. The, the woman in the video is about to give a business pitch. So she's trying to sell some product to these two clients from Mexico. And we see, we see the situation. The guy, the English guy is her boss. We've got Paula about to give the presentation and we can see what's going to happen. Now this immediately, hopefully with your students, whether they are in work students or whether they are, you know, university students, it gives them an idea of what they expect to happen. And they can predict. They also might have an opinion of how Paula should go forward, how, what strategy should she adopt, okay? So, and this is where things get interesting because this is where we're looking at the business skills involved. So far, we haven't talked about the English skills. We're just focusing on the business skills. And I'm guaranteed this will get your students engaged. Uh, now, what we're looking at is, is influencing here. Now, the main idea, this is taken straight from the book, is this idea of push and pull strategies. Now, basically, it describes here that the push strategy is to be a little more aggressive. Now, this would involve Paula trying to give across her reasons why the, the, the customer should buy the product. So she's being a little bit aggressive salesperson. The pull strategy is, to summarize, is about her kind of being more um, persuasive, persuading the customer to take the product, asking what their needs are, etc. Okay, so you've got two different approaches that are very real to business styles. Um, and what is the student's task? They have to choose which one they think is the best. So it leads to a lot of discussion. They can decide, they can put them in groups, they could vote. Which one should Paula do? Should she be aggressive? Should she be more relaxed? And this is the cool bit. Now, what we have in uh, Business Partner is the introductory video. But then we have two possible scenarios. We have option A, where Paula is more aggressive, okay, and pushy. And then we have option B, where Paula is more persuasive, all right? And the students can choose which destiny that she's going to follow, which is kind of fun. You know, I, the students really like this. Um, they can obviously watch both videos, but they can choose which one they want to watch first. You could take a vote, take the majority and see if it works. Then they can look at both videos and see which one they think was most effective. Now, the interesting thing uh, for me when I watch these videos from Business Partner is usually when you uh, have a situation like this in, in a textbook, they will give you one answer is right and one answer is wrong. Uh, right, that's just usual. But the interesting thing is here, it's not so uh, clear cut as that. It's not so black and white. And sometimes in these videos, you could still argue that what option B was better than A, while some people will argue option A was better than B. It's interesting. There's just trade-offs in each approach. And if you think about it, that's much more like the real world. It's rare that we say, yes, I chose 100% the best option. The other option was terrible. Usually there's a trade-off between the two things. And this is so true in the world of business and so realistic, it brings another level of reality to the classroom. So after the videos, the students can discuss which one they thought was the most effective strategy and they can analyze what happened. But it doesn't end there because there's one more video. And in this final video, they get to hear the opinion of an expert from the business world and he gives his analysis of how the, the negotiation or the, the sales pitch continued and progressed, all right? So that's the final video there. Obviously, that's not the end of the lesson, though, you know, that we haven't talked about the English yet. The students are using English, they're discussing, and they're hopefully engaged, but there's a lot of language they can take out of this, too. And the language they can use here is all about functional language, chunks of language and phrases they could use during a sales pitch that they might be involved in. Basically, what we have is here dealing with objections, okay? So disagreements. And we've got uh, categories of different phrases. We've got to acknowledge, 
to probe, to ask more questions, to answer and to confirm. The idea is these phrases are taken directly from the videos and the students can isolate them and then maybe use them in a dialogue a little bit later in some kind of task. So it's a great section. I really like it. The videos are really engaging. The students often find some of them quite funny because of the situations the people are in. They meet the same characters again and again. So they're really useful and, and good fun. Um, but also they bring out a lot of useful language too. All right, so that was section three, communication skills. Let's move on to section four, so lesson four. And again, we're focusing here on business skills, yeah? Uh, there's various business skills presented throughout the, uh, the different units. Uh, in this case, the example I'm gonna show you is about presenting facts and figures. And as you can see, the students are gonna be talking about graphs, an important thing they'd have to do in their business lives, yeah? Um, Basically, if, if I don't know if any of you came to my presentation a couple of weeks ago where I talked about how to teach graph presentation or graph description to students, uh, but it's kind of connected to this. I talked about how useful it was across many different areas and different fields. Well, obviously, it's very useful to business too because given a presentation student or a report even, students have to talk about graphs and the presentation of figures. Uh, how do we do that? Well, there's functional language again. Functional language is so key to the practical side of our business students' um, uh, general lives when they're doing things outside the classroom. So a lot of functional language is, is presented here that they can plug in to use to quickly describe uh, graph presentations. All right, uh, writing is not uh, neglected. So in lesson five, we have writing. Different tasks, different units, things about writing covering letters to apply for jobs. Uh, in this case, we're talking about summarizing. So an important skill when the student has been to a meeting or a presentation, for example, they might want to summarize the key information to share it with colleagues. It's exactly what we have here, some practice of that. Again, the key place is functional language, language that is ready to go, language they can use quickly and effectively to reach their objective. But the practical side is not neglected. If we move down there to the bottom of the page, we can see that there's a, a pair task here where the students are working together to work out a summary of some information. Okay? It's actually linked with uh, listening too because the students are listening to a talk. So not only summarizing skills, but integrating listening skills in there, uh, collaborating with a partner so they're speaking and listening to each other too. And the final section, I said, was the business workshop. Now, what the business workshop does is bring together all of the different parts of the unit and lets the students produce something. As you can see there, it's about crowdfunding. Now, remember the topic, the theme running through this unit was about entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are good at raising money for their businesses. And that's exactly what we get to at the end of the unit after they've passed through all of these different practices about pitching different products, the communication skills, presenting information. Right now, they get to the section where they're gonna look at, uh, at the topic of crowdfunding. And to do that, they're gonna meet some people. They're gonna meet some people making a pitch for a new business idea. Um, and basically, more videos where they meet some, some different guys. And these videos can be used as a model to put into practice what they've learned. So what I would do from this, the video is a model and it moves directly to a task where the students have to make their own video of a pitch of their own idea, their own business idea. It could be anything. The important thing is the effectiveness of the pitch and how they use the language. They could do this in the class, just in groups, obviously with a little bit of preparation time, or they could even shoot videos. That would be fun. I mean, it's easy to do now, right? With your phone. I mean, why not? Uh, even if you were teaching online, they could do this. It would be even more realistic that it would be a video pitch based on a Zoom class, for example. All right. So it brings everything together. Very communicative, very uh, collaborative activity at the end of the unit. So we're going to summarize some parts of Business Partner now because I want to bring it all together and let, let you see what you had over that the course of a, a typical unit. So let's take a look at that. Let, let, let's see what we have in each of these lessons in unit six. Remember, this was B1+. We had 
in the first one, we had two videos. We had the video of the guy in Amsterdam. Um, we also had the alternative video choice as well, which you could use too. Then if we move to communication skills, there were four videos there, all right? There was the introduction. There was then the uh, the two options, A or B, that, the, that Paula could have followed. And then we had the expert's opinion as well. Then right at the end there in unit six, we had, a, 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 well, unit <laughs> the business uh, workshop section, I should say. Um, we also had um, the videos of the, the, the sales pitches from the crowdfunding people. So in total there, we've got seven videos per unit, which is a lot, right? And you might be thinking, but why? <laughs> well, my first answer to this would be, it's 2020, isn't it? Everyone's using video. It's so easy to use video. So really, textbooks today should be full of video. It's much more natural and much more realistic when you're hearing someone speak, because after all, you know, videos for English students are listening practice. Uh, when you're hearing someone speak, it's much more natural to see them, isn't it? Even today, the only time when you actually just listen to a person, it's on the phone. And that's get, becoming less and less popular because we're all using Zoom, we're using FaceTime, we're using various different programs. So you can see the people talking, all right? So it also, just using video more than just listening, brings an element of realism into the classroom because we don't just listen to people, we see their expressions and we see what's happening with them also. All right, so I think it's great that there's lots of videos used in Business Partner. What else have we got? Well. Take a look at this. If I just highlight all these practical communicative tasks through the unit. Yes, there's a practical task in every section, focusing on that, that, that need of our business students. We've got projects, we've got little speaking tasks, we've got um, mini tasks, we've got various things where they're gonna be collaborating with a partner and trying to reach an objective, which of course is what business people should be doing at work too. Um, also, this is the in an interesting part as well. We said at the beginning that the units follow a theme. As you can see there, job hunting, business strategy, logistics. So this means each lesson follows a natural progression from one to the other. And it can be, it follows uh, very smoothly through the whole unit. While that is true, you don't have to follow that because each lesson can be a standalone lesson meaning you can pick and choose the lessons you want to do with your students. You can actually choose your route through the course. Hmm. Now, why is that useful? Well, but there's two reasons, really. I said at the beginning, if you're teaching uh, in-work students, they might miss a lesson. And in some courses, if they miss a lesson and then they come to the next lesson, they're going to have some time to catch up. They're going to be confused because it's dependent on the lesson before, which can be a problem. With business partner, less so. If a student carries on through the entire course, that's great for them. But if a student just comes to that Wednesday class and they missed the one previously, they'll be okay. They'll still take something away from it because of the way the lessons are designed, all right? Um, there's another reason as well. What about if your students turn up a class and say, okay, I have a presentation next week. Maybe it's at university, they all have a presentation. Or maybe it's a student in a business and they have some kind of meeting to take part in. And they say, can you help me with this? Um, I'm, 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 it's great doing the class, but I want some specific help. And you say, okay, so in the next lesson, I'll do a special class where I'll help you with negotiation skills or I'll help you with formal email skills. And then because you're a conscientious teacher, you go away, you think, okay, I have to prepare something special. You go on the internet, you find material. You might not have to do that with Business Partner because if you're using this book, you could just go to the, the contents page and check, is there a lesson already somewhere in this book on that topic? You can use it. It doesn't matter if you've jumped ahead a little bit because the lessons can be standalone. So that's really nice in cutting down your preparation time, but also providing your students with a high level of kind of content, if you like, that's already been well put together. All right, so I think that's a really nice feature, particularly uh, with business students who often miss classes and often are quite demanding. Flexibility, right, at the basis of how the book's put together. Uh, almost the final thing about it, obviously uh, it's got lots of videos because it's 2020. It also has 
online content. And online content, if you're familiar with this platform, is provided with My English Lab, Pearson's online platform for student learning. Uh, this means the students have access to uh, basically, in the first instance, an electronic uh, workbook, okay, which is automatically marked and graded for them with the teacher being involved. They can access this through the internet, wherever they have Wi-Fi, wherever they have an internet connection. But it provides lots more things like extra listening practice, speaking practice, and other things too. So also an option for business partner. So in summary, hopefully what you've seen as we've walked through this, this webinar today is business partner is definitely flexible. Um, there's, you can choose the lessons you're going to teach. Um, there's so many things about that. Even the levels that you teach uh, are not just the traditional levels, but we also have these plus levels too. It's very practical. There's practical tasks running all the way through it, and the students will be really involved in doing something collaborative and working towards an objective. Finally, it's realistic. Look at all the videos. They really bring out the realism and bring the business world into the classroom, um, whether they're authentic videos or the dramatizations of, of business, uh, business scenarios. It's a fantastic way to get the students engaged. Some of them will relate to the things that have happened, or even if they're not in the business world, they will be able to think about, they can imagine these situations really well after the video content has been showed. Shown, even. <laughs> My English has gone terrible. It's the end of the week. All right. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that, was, that brings me to the end of the actual uh, main webinar today. So as business partner, a successful partnership between language and business skills. I hope you agree. I hope you get the opportunity to take a look at it. Um, it is a good book. I, I've actually, I do teach with it. So, uh, you know, I, I know what I'm talking about there. Um, Take a look at it. It could be used in an actual class. It could also be used as a supplementary book um, to just pick out certain lessons to use with your students. 